testimonies, amen, the psalm service, everything lining up. The Word of God says, Elisha the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And according to the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is, before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by Cherith, that is, before Jordan. And the ravens brought, brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and the bread and the flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. What do we do when the brook dries up? What do we do? What do we do when the brook dries up? An amazing story of the prophet, the man of God, who God had uh, uh, used him. He speaks the words to Ahab. He's this fearless man. He goes to the king and he says to him, there's going to be a famine in the land. And uh, three and a half years. And, 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 and But God takes care of the man of God. Can you imagine that he is the man, Strajan, who, who everybody else is going through famine, but, but God is using the most unlikely of resources to feed him because ravens won't even feed their very young when there's a famine. They will take care of themselves. But God said, I'll use a raven to take care of my man. And he said, right here by the brook Cherith, I'm going to give him water. And uh, 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 just an amazing man, a tremendous <clears throat> spiritual force that this man has. And, and, and Cherith, amen, it's a time of separation. That's what the word Cherith means. It means separated. Have you ever been separated to God's plan? God calls you aside. He ministers to you. He just separates you. How many has ever had a Cherith in life? Amen, I have, where God pulls you aside, amen, and shows that your life is, is, is different than everyone else's life. And He gives you that sheriff experience. <clears throat> so here it is that, that uh, uh, He's by, by the brook, and regardless of a man's statue, a status in the kingdom of God, there is a brook experience where he will be sent to under the, the direction of God. You ever think about this waters in the Word of God? You ever think about Moriah? Amen. That place where the waters were full of strife and contention uh, 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 or bitterness. Uh, the waters uh, uh, of, of where there's purifying, the waters of separation, the waters of affliction, the waters of gall, the waters of life throughout the Word of God. There are many waters and God calls us to various places at various times in our life where it just separates us. Any of you ever had a moment where it just seems like life is not as sweet? Amen. It's a little bit bitter. Amen. We probably all know about that. You know about those places where there is uh, those Arabias, whether there's where there's contention and, and strife. You know, sometimes we can go through that in life where there's a contentious place and there's a place that feels like it's full of strife. God calls us to that place. Amen. But God is doing something. When He calls us to the brook, God is doing something in us. And here it was that God was doing something in his prophet Elijah. And, and, and as he goes there, amen, God is working and showing that he's a God of provision. That God is a God who keeps his word. But, but all of a sudden, in the middle of provision, it dries up. How do you like that? I personally don't like that in life. Where there's a dry up of the brook. The brook seems to be failing. And so, why does the brook fail? There's lots of folks who always ask that question. Does God still care for me? Does God have an out for me? 
I think that's that's common for folks sometimes to to think when life is going in a difficult path. But birth failure means this is that God is trying to do some things in Elijah's life. If you're finding that God has dried up one brook and the season of that brook is over, you're digging around. Can you imagine? You ever been to the ocean before and you dig in the sand and as you dig in the sand, the water seems to come in that, that little pond that you did, dug. And so I imagine here it is, Elijah, he's digging in the brook and he's digging, but it's hot stones. The sun has been beaten down with the stones he's digging at. And it's finding that it's not moist, it's not damp, it's very dry as he's digging around. There's, it's dried up. It's not coming back. It's done. It's over. This, this contributory to the Jordan River, this, this brook, Cherith, amen, that's the sweetest. Those springs, those little, those little creeks that, that, that feed the big, uh, big tributary, amen, they're sweet. And, and, and now it is dried up. But what is God trying to do? I think there's something that God does in our life. And He does this. He shows us that we are much like our brother. You know, sometimes in life we can feel like we get this past because we're a Christian and because we love God, because we pray. But God shows us that there are times where the brook dries up to bring us into this, this uh, uh, a deep sense of brotherhood of those who are around us. Do you ever think about men in the Word of God, men like Noah, who's being ridiculed because he's building an ark and it's never rained before? All they've ever experienced is dew in the morning. He's, being, he's, he's getting this ridicule. But God was bringing him to a place where he could relate to others. Do you ever think about Joseph, where his brethren are, are, are rejecting him? Uh, they're jealous of him. Why is this allowed to be happening? Because God's showing him, you're much like everybody else, Joseph. I have a plan for your life and I have good things for your life, but I'm showing you you're no different than everybody else. And because you're no different than everybody else, you'll be able to relate to them and they'll be able to relate to you. You can share your testimony and they can share theirs. Amen? And so here it is. You ever think about David, this man after God's own heart? Amen. The, the man who's chosen to be king, but yet he is this man who's running from Saul. Amen. Fleeing away. Do you ever think about the prophet Jeremiah who's known for his weeping? Uh, do you ever think about Jesus Christ and his suffering? Do you ever think about the hardship that Paul went through? They had one purpose and one thing in mind. God was showing them that they are in collaboration with their brothers. In Philippians 3, the Word of God says, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them uh, but done, that I may win Christ. And, and, and He uh, uh, found in me, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is uh, uh, through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings, being made com uh, conformable unto His death. Do you know why we go through the, the dry ups of the brooks of life? It's because we can experience the power of God in our our very own life, that our righteousness is not of ourself, but our righteousness is of faith. If the work never drives up, we never have to exercise faith. We never have to reach out to God and say, God, give me a fresh new direction in my life. Amen. God is wanting to do something in us. Thank you. Hey, has your work dried up? <clears throat> Things seem to be caving in. I want to encourage you. Know that when the world is standing upon its head, that God is still standing upright and has a plan for you. Amen. You hear me? Amen. Amen. When the brook dries up, God still has a plan for you. Amen. Amen. God brings you to collaboration with your brotherhood. Now Elijah knows what it's like for that, that mother who is hearing her baby cry because they're experiencing drought and not able to get the food. And, and, and Elijah able to relate to the farmer who has, who has lost his, his, his cattle. Amen. He, he's, he's being brought into the brotherhood. He understands. You know what? In our life, when the brook dries up, when things go wrong, amen, it's our opportunity to say, yes, I've experienced the same thing, but God has been faithful. 
faithful. When the brook dries up, he calls me, he's causing me on to another place. When the brook dries up, he still has something for me. Amen. We encourage others in the world. We can encourage other believers to know that God is still faithful. God still has a plan. God is still in control. Amen. Even when things in life are shifting and changing. Life is full of shifts and change. Oh, yeah. Amen. Brother, as you said to me, we're all getting older, right, this morning? And that older, it's all shifts and changes, right? Any of you can relate with us? Amen. Shifts and changes. And God's... But God's faithful. But God's faithful in every season. If you're finding the shift, if you're finding the change, if you're finding the dried up brook, if you're finding the rain is not coming any longer, it's not that God's not done. God is not done. But God has a new direction for your life. <clears throat> See, the failure of the brook proves that God definitely makes no exceptions. And I looked around and said, man, everything they touch turns to gold. We used to have a saying back in West Virginia, you know, you can fall on a cow, cow manure is what we call it, you come out smelling good. You know, what that was saying was, it was part of my crudeness, but the saying was that they always seem to come out smelling like rose. But you know what? Brook failures show that God makes no exceptions. It raised upon the just, the unjust. God's very own Son came, robed Himself in flesh, and experienced temptation like you and I experienced temptation, experienced rejection, experienced hunger, experienced the things that you and I go through. You know why? Because God shows that humanity would have no exception. But He showed through the deity of His Son, amen, that with every temptation there is a way of escape. Amen. God has made a way of escape. Amen. And if we suffer with Him, we shall also reign with Him. Amen. That the sufferings of this present time are not more than be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. That it's not of our own righteousness, but it's through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. So when God begins to make the shift, amen, we find that God is about to do something in our life. When we look at Jesus Christ, Amen. Uh, you take away the compassion of Him, He was just another man. You take away the Gethsemane, He was just another man. You take away the wilderness, He was just another man. You take away His tears, He was just another man. But you look and you see. Isaiah said, For He shall brought before them as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no, comfort, no, no form or comeliness, and when we shall see Him, there is no beauty that we should desire Him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from Him. He was despised, and we esteemed Him not. Surely hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem Him as stri a stricken, smitten of God, afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and with His stripes we are healed. Praise God that He's not just another man. Amen. But He came to show us that when life has its shifts and changes, Amen, God still has a plan and God is still for us. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. It hurts when the book dries up. But it's important to keep attending to the heart. Amen. Never underestimate the value of what a dried up work is. Never underestimate the value of what tears may be. Amen. You see, there are several things. Paul, he said, I must go to Rome. He was warned by the prophet, don't go to Rome. Or don't go through Jerusalem to go to Rome. But that's the way you got to go to go to Jerusalem to get to Rome. He, he said, no, Rome is in my heart. i got to get there. It's my destination. It's where i got to be. And you see, he goes as a prisoner, but it doesn't matter. He's going to see Rome. You see, he goes and he endures disappointing circumstances, but it doesn't matter. He's going to see Rome. He, 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 he falls into great wickedness, but it doesn't matter. He's going to see Rome. He, he, he is hemmed in by the Roman soldiers, 
but it doesn't matter. He's going to see Rome. You see, he is hampered and hindered by chains on his hands and his feet, but it doesn't matter. He's going to see Rome. A health leaf is his body. Amen. He experiences weakness, but Paul says it doesn't matter. He's going to see Rome. Amen. There's a chop block awaiting for you, Paul. It doesn't matter. I've got to see Rome. He's, uh, the only congregation that you're going to have is, is soldiers. It doesn't matter. I've got to see Rome. You see, there's going to be things in our life that are going to test and are going to try our faith. Amen. The brook is going to dry up, but in our mind, we've got to have made up. It doesn't matter what happens. I've got to make heaven my home. Amen. Through the good times, through the bad times, through the times where there's lots of water in the brook, and through the times where the brook is dried up, where there's times I know that there is provision, and where I don't know where the next provision is coming from. It doesn't matter. I've got to make heaven my home. Amen. Child of God, I want to encourage you this morning through the shifts and through the changes of life. Amen. When the brook dries up, it doesn't matter. We've got to make heaven our home. Amen. See, sometimes it brings us to the place where it shows us that we're just like everybody else. It brings us to a place where we realize that we experience the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Amen. If we want to, if we want to follow Christ, amen, we've got to realize that the sufferings of this present time aren't worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. But sometimes the brook dries up because it's time to cast a new vision. The old vision is gone. It's been lived. It's been good. We've enjoyed it. But God says now it's time for a new vision. See, God spoke to Elijah and told him to go to Zarephath. Now there would be a little little lady there waiting on him. But Elijah didn't know what was ahead. Sometimes in life, and most times, we just walk by faith and not by sight. Our life needs to be marked by walking by faith. Do you trust God with everything that happens in our life? Sister Doc, you encouraged me on Tuesday night, even though it was a great loss of your brother, but your faith said, we go on because we know where he's at. It's not that we choose or want those changes in life, but we know by faith that God is going to take care of us. God is leading us. God is directing us. God is not going to bring us to harm. Even if we go through the fire, He's going to show up. Amen. If we go through the storm, He's going to be a shelter. Amen. God is going to be faithful. We've got to walk by faith. Amen. Sometimes folks may look and say, David, what is that? That's just a sling in your hand. No, that's a giant slayer in my hand. Amen. Faith says it's a giant slayer. Amen. Well, what about just like our brother 
we're not exempt from the trials and the difficulties of life. But what we're going to do in that is give a testimony that God is faithful. Our opportunity to show God is faithful. He dries up the brook to remind us that heaven's our home. And no matter what we go through, we have to know that the end result is we've got to make it. <clears throat> Caleb, you said about needing to carry 70 pounds upon your back for how many miles? 40. 40 miles. I can't imagine that. I can't. 70 pounds on your back for 40 miles. But I'm sure that you were thinking about mile number 40 when you were in mile number 1 through 39. And the closer you got to 40, even though it was tough, even though there were blisters, 40 still sounded good because I was the mark. Listen, and the shifts and the changes of life, and the drying up of the brook and the disappointment, and the needing to go someplace else where maybe it's not so readily available as it once was. There's a God who's faithful. And you may say, those of you, I don't see it all so clearly. That's the great thing about our relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't have to see it clearly. Because He does. He leads us by the hand. And He's guiding us. And the next place is going to be just as sweet, if not sweeter, than the place that we've been. Because we've built a relationship that's deeper with God. We have grown our faith. You may say, Brother Bill, I have very little in my hands. Don't look at the little, but look at the magnitude of what it can do when God gets involved in it. David, it's a giant killer. Samson, it's a vessel. It's a weapon that is used for war. Amen, because God has gotten involved. With every head bowed and every eye closed, and you say, Pastor, I have a change of things. It's been a three and a half year stretch by the brook chair. God has separated me and God has worked and done great things in me. But now I'm digging and there's no water. I'm at that place you're talking about. I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister. God has a zero path ahead for you. God already has people to desire that has meal in their barrel for you. God has provisions for tomorrow. It's okay. Don't walk by sight, but walk by faith. Because God is going to see you through. He's faithful. If that's you, amen, would you gather in this morning? Amen. If that's not you, would you still gather in and say, God, when the change comes, I'm trusting you. Let's gather in this morning. Everybody who